And um, I sent this to Ambassador Terzi on September 12th. That was the day that the two, minutes, the two foreign ministers went to Albania. To dear Ambassador Terzi, I'm writing in my capacity as a former member of the U.S. Congress, and I use my congressional stationery, not civically or anything. I'm still able to use that. Having represented Westchester County, New York, and the House of Representatives from 85 to 89, my district included many Italian-American and Albanian-American constituents. I'm also the founder of the Albanian-American Civic League, a nonprofit organization, volunteer lobby for the Albanian people that pr promotes their human rights and political freedom, all Albanians in Southeast Europe. My father, Giuseppe, his birth certificate said Giuseppe, my father, Giuseppe Diogwadi, immigrated to the United States with his mother and sisters in 1929 from a small Albanian and Italian-speaking village called Greci, which is located in the province of Avellino, not far from Naples. This is one of the 51 Albanian-speaking villages today, by the way. Can't say too much in here, but one day we're going to have a meeting. I'm going to give them the book that tells them the whole history of the Albanian in Italy. I think even the Italians have forgotten that. But believe it or not, Italy pays for, you take my father's town, Greci, up to the eighth grade, they pay for the Albanian language to be taught in the first to the eighth grade. That's how good Italy has been. The <laughs> okay. Think about Greece. Try to get, you know, Albanian language, even though in Himara, which is what I said here, they allow the Greek language, we can't get it in Greece. These double standards have to change. So, I said, in Avellino, in Naples, and I said, the inhabitants of Greci are part of the Albanian Abresh minority in Italy, excuse me, descended from the Albanian army of George Castriati, also known as Scandrape, that provided military assistance to the King of Naples in 1461 to defeat the invading French. I wanted to make sure he knew the Albanian contribution to keeping Italy as Italy and not France. I understand that Italian Foreign Minister Franco Frattini is visiting Tirana today in the company of Greek Foreign Minister Stavros Lambrinitis to encourage, quote, to encourage political actors in Albania to work together for European integration uh, of Albania. Very nice. Close quote. While it is not my place to challenge the foreign policies and diplomatic, act, diplomatic actions of countries other than the United States, I'm a citizen here. I can challenge anything I want. Uh, I wanted you and your government to know that I am disappointed about this joint visit because it seems to benefit the Greek nationalist agenda, nationalistic agenda in Albania rather than the EU integration agenda. In other words, they say they're going for one reason, but they went for another reason. All right? I think we can agree, Mr. Ambassador, in spite of our current economic problems, Greece is an important ally of both the United States and Italy as a member of NATO and the European Union. And it remains a significant regional, political, and economic actor in Southeast Europe. That economic doesn't look too good today, but I had to say it. <laughs> Nevertheless, I am concerned that some important aspects of Greece's foreign policy work against European integration in the region and I put dots, I'm going to tell you what they are. Because this has to go on the record. I hope these people here in the press are good enough not to be censored, not to be bought, and tell the whole story. Because one of the problems we have is that the Berisha government is allowing a lot of this to happen. With the census that's going on, with the money that's being spent right now, uh, and, and yet we don't hear the pressure being put on Greece. Am I right? Yeah. All right, let them hear it. So, one, Greece is undertaking an unprecedented diplomatic campaign to advance her nationalistic program in Albania. And it includes the following. One, Greece to this day refuses to recognize the human rights of the ethnic Albanian Chamorian minority in Greece. As you may know, this minority is composed of Chamorians of the Orthodox religion, who live in northwestern Greece, as well as the Chamorians of the Islamic faith, who were subjected to terrible massacres, atrocities, and human rights abuses at the end of World War II, and they were forced to find 
life-saving refuge in Albania. One. Number two, Greece has still not formally abolished the state of war law with Albania, which was instituted in 1940 when Mussolini's army occupied Albania. Can you imagine in this day and age? Three, Greece has pressed Albania to approve two cemeteries in southern Albania dedicated to Greek soldiers who perished during the Italian-Greek War of 1940 and 41, while Italy, long ago, returned and buried her own soldiers on Italian soil. All right? So you got to know this. Four, foreign, excuse me, Foreign Minister Lambridis, during his visit to Pristina, just before this other visit, reiterated his government's refusal to recognize the Republic of Kosovo. He also issued a thinly veiled warning to the Albanian government in Tirana to ignore the Constitutional Court of Albania's ruling, which threw out the Greek-Albanian agreement on the delimitation of the continental shelf in the Ionian Sea as a violation of the Albanian Constitution and the UN Con Convention of the Law of the Sea. Now, people don't know this, but here is the Greek government telling the government of Albania, you know, watch out because we don't want to see that change. It's the advantage of Greece, isn't it? All right, we got it. This is why well, we need a lobby. This is why we need public relations. This is why we need your support. This is why you got to go to families all over this country who are Albanian. This has got to get on the record. Not enough for me to give a speech in Congress. I could put this on the record tomorrow. Dana Rohrbacher would probably publish this. But then what? It's finished. You've got to work like we did for the Republic of Kosovo. Many years with a strategy, step by step. Gur, gur, bahat, mur. Mur, mur, bahat, kalaya. Kalaya, kalaya, bahat. The Solar Republic and Punta Shipta. Shipta. Punta Shipta. Five. In spite of its unprecedented financial crisis, Greece continues to fund, give money to language schools in Korcha and Imara in southern Albania and to pay retirement benefits and pensions to Albanian citizens who opportunistically declare themselves as Greek. In other words, they're being born. All right. You should also know that Greece is pressing Albania to conduct a census of ethnic minorities based on subjective criteria in violation of the European Framework Convention on National Minorities, while Greece still refuses to identify her own national minorities and to ratify the Convention on National Minorities. In this connection, Greece's Council General in Korcha earlier this year, this is the guy that's in Albania, Korcha, from Greece, declared openly that Albania's vlaks are in fact Greeks and should be counted as Greeks. Furthermore, the Council General from Korcha said that the census would be only the beginning of further steps towards the implementation of the quote, Northern Ebrus agenda, close quote. The term Greek nationalists used to describe their aims in southern Albania, mainly to try to take southern Albania and make it part of northern Greece, which is never going to happen, but they're going to try everything for autonomy, and Greece is pushing for that. Just like the Serbs are trying to push that in northern Kosovo, and they're not going to get it. After 20 years of our work, you can be sure there's going to be no partition of Kosovo over my dead body and Shirley's, Dana Rohrbach, and many others. But that doesn't mean we stay here and it's going to be happening, no. We got to make sure we publish a lot. Shirley just published an article that's going to be signed by a very powerful congressman in the next couple of days in the American press. Just on that issue. So, in conclusion, I feel strongly that the joint visit of the foreign ministers Fratini and Lambrinidis to Tirana serves Greece's regional agenda, not Italy's, at this important time of desired European integration. Greece needs to address the existence and marginalized status of its own ethnic minorities, reverse its anti-European policies against Albania and Macedonia, recognize the Republic of Kosovo, 
and commence affirmative action policies towards the Chamrian minority and other min ethnic minorities in Greece. Only then, in my opinion, should Italy attach her immense goodwill in southeastern Europe and the affairs there to any Greek diplomatic initiative in Albania. Sincerely, Jody Aguardi, and I sent a copy to Congresswoman Ileana Ross Lane. All right? I put myself on the line. I'm sure a lot of people are now going to be very mad when this letter comes out public. The Greek lobby is not weak, but we have the truth. When you have the truth, you should not be afraid. You should declare it. You should put the sunlight on it. All the truth needs is to be shown. And then it grows faster than a tree. But if we're afraid to tell the truth, if we think someone is going to hurt my family or me if I tell the truth, that spreads. And before you know it, nobody wants to speak. But if we all stand up, then no one can stop the truth and no one can stop the progress Albanians need to be one of the most powerful nations in Europe today. Why do I say that? Because they are born entrepreneurs. You drop Albanians anywhere, they know how to start a business. They know how to get a job. 